Hi folks, it's CycleCamp again, and uh, we're going to do some basic disassembly of the uh, Carcano uh, preparatory to get trying to get some of the paint off the barrel on the stock. Uh, this is going to be fairly simple because uh, most of the things that make this a little harder to disassemble are already missing from the gun, the, the, the front uh, nose plate and, uh, you know, the parts that keep the... Uh, the uh, Front, uh, the barrel band in and all that. So basically the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the bolt. These are pretty straightforward, very similar to a Mauser action. This is a cock on open. I don't know if you notice that. So if we close that down, it's cock on open. Also another thing is this big tab here. This is actually the safety. And the way this works is you push it in and then rotate it up. And at this point in time, and it also blocks your access to the uh, sight. So you know that your gun is unsafe because this big old piece of junk is in the way and blocks your access to the site. So at this point in time, you can't do anything because it's it's all locked up. Um, so let me take the safety back off, and you can also safety it. Let me let me relax the hammer down. Um, so you can also safety it while it is before it is cocked, and at that point in time, you know again you can't you can't pull the trigger. You know, it's not engaged, you, you can't really do anything. So let's put that back down. So uh, in order to take it apart, it's very simple. You just pull the bolt open, slide back, pull the trigger, and remove the bolt. Very similar to a lot of the uh, Mauser styles that are out there. Uh, you can see, here's the bolt face, big old extractor. Uh, don't know what kind of ejector, there's an ejector here someplace. It's on the, uh, oh, the ejector's way back, way back in here, so, I'm sorry, never mind, never mind, that I'm, I'm having brain fade here, but anyway, so there's the, there's the big extractor for the, for the shell to come out, and now you can see inside the firearm, and you see, we can see all the way underneath, and that's because of the Monlicker style on block clip, here's the foot that's used, or the follower that's internal to the gun that follows the, uh, comes up underneath the, rounds. So now that that's out, you'll see back here, uh, you may or may not be able to see back here, there's a, there's a bolt back here, and I'm sure there's one up in about this area here. So let's turn her over, and basically all we should have to do now is get out our big old screwdrivers, try to find a, a good, again, hollow ground screwdrivers when you're working on guns. This is an example of a hollow ground screwdriver. You'll notice that if you look at the if you look at the tip, you'll notice it doesn't go flat. It's not flat on either side. It doesn't make a triangle. It's actually hot. It's actually ground on a curve, and that means that the there's more meat here in the actual uh, part of the the bit that grabs the, the uh, whatever's going on, and that keeps you from stripping stuff out. So. Now I may not have this exactly, this may not, this is actually too big. So this one's too big, so we get a smaller one. It's a good width, but it is not a good thickness. So, okay, so we'll take off this forward piece. I'd like to thank my daughter for getting me this really nice uh, bench thing for, for uh, Christmas. It really makes life a lot easier. I don't do anything any any better, but it does make it a little easier to hold on to. Oop, and I don't know if you if you notice you you, you can't notice because you're not looking at it from the side. So you'll see the screws are two different sizes: long one for the back, tall one for the rear. Goes in there, and I should now be able to lift out. I'm definitely going to be able. To, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't take that front barrel band off. So front barrel. This one that just slides out because there's nothing, there's nothing holding it. The barrel band goes on the top of the handguard, and normally there would be a a uh, spring, barrel band spring, to hold that in to the, the bottom of the stock. But that is missing because someone tried to make a someone tried to make a what do you call it gun out of this a uh, sporter and did a terrible job. And they got about halfway done, realized they'd mess it up and stopped. So. So here's the here's the action of the firearm. There's really not much to it, but you can see you see I'm, I'm, this is what we're going to try to be be trying to get rid of. We're going to try to get rid of these all these all this red stuff and uh, 
get, uh, clean that up a little bit. I do not know if I am going to actually take the finish off this gun. The, the stuff in the back is actually pretty nice. You know, it has that nice black, uh, almost like a black painted finish. Uh, but I don't know if I'm going to try to get rid of that. It's really going to depend on how well we do with the uh, getting this, this paint off. So we'll see. But that was, that was basically it. Um, there isn't really much else going on here. This is, you can see this is a, uh, a standard butt plate. It does not have the little trap door in, in uh, some of the guns. The, uh, uh, the, there's a little trap door here and that's where your cleaning rods and stuff would be stored. Since this is a long rifle, the cleaning rod actually would go into this groove here. And of course this would be much longer. This is supposed to be about, about that much longer. So that, that cleaning rod would go down through here and somewhere's in this mess. Yeah, you could, I can see a hole. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me see if I can, yeah. See, you can see the hole here in the, uh, underneath that, that would come all the way up through. And then I expect that we would eventually, yeah, and on the other side, there's a hole on the other side. And it's eventually gonna come down, I expect, into this uh, metal contrivance here. And then it would, then the, the uh, cleaning rod would screw into that. There would be screw treads on this. So that's basically where that, where that would go. Now I see there are a couple of bedding pillars in here, here, and here. Uh, I don't see anything else, so I assume that this, this bottom piece will probably knock out. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Let me just get a quick rubber mallet. Yep, and that pops right out. So here's the the box assembly on the bottom. Oh, oh actually in, in pretty good shape. When, when you get right down to it, this this mechanism is the uh, this is the release for the internal magazine in case it was still full. Here's the follower. This is the follower for the uh, for the rounds inside the man liquor clip. And there, obviously there's some springs and stuff in there, but uh, there are and there is some of that red crap on on here as well. So we'll be trying to take those. Let me just double check. I don't see any other red on any other metal in here. I do see some on the stock itself. I do see a little bit of some of that red paint on the stock itself. So we will be trying to uh, get rid of that as well. But we've got the. The whole thing uh, taken apart, and uh, later on I'll, I'll, I'll disassemble the uh, bolt, and that's pretty straightforward. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube for that, so you don't really need me to show you that. But now that we've got it all taken apart, we will try and get rid of some of the paint that's on that, uh, the paint that's on this assembly on this uh, firearm receiver. Okay, I, I've picked a, a part of the firearm where I can play around with it a little bit and it won't show too badly. And the first thing I'm going to do to try to get this paint off is I'm going to put a little bit of gun oil on it. And then I'm going to uh, hit it with uh, some steel wool. So we'll try that and see what happens first. This is 4 aught steel wool, so it's very fine, and unfortunately it's too fine, and it is, it is taking it off, it is taking off the, uh, it is taking off that, uh, that paint a little bit at a time, which is good because we're trying to protect the finish. But it will, it will be a little bit of a chore, especially in some of the spots where it's uh, kind of blopped on there, you know. But really, uh, you know, I had this this little tiny area here was clear before, and now you can see I've got it cleared around. So, so if you really if you really wanted to do it that way, I suppose you could do it that way. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit more gun oil on there. But this feels like a very hard paint. Uh, 
and not like a not like the kind of paint you get out of a rattle can. Um, it actually feels more like the paint that you'd get out of a, a uh, what do you call it a uh, model set. So I'm wondering if perhaps a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, fingernail polish remover might not work better. So I think I'm going to try a little since I still have this big chunk here and you can see it's really thick in here it's, it's really on there quite well um, I think we're going to try that so we'll, we'll, let's hold on a minute we'll try that okay so I went downstairs and grabbed some fingernail polish remover out of the big cabinet downstairs and uh, I also grabbed some cotton swabs to apply it with so I'm going to put just a little bit in the cap here Try a little bit of this stuff and see if this helps at all. So I'm going to wet this up now. Unfortunately, this is the part that I also did with the with the oil. I don't know if the oil will have any effect on that, so I may try some of this in another spot. loosens it up anymore and if it does fine if not you know we know the we know the steel wool works so we can uh, we can continue using that if we have to I uh, just hoping I could find something that would take this off a little quicker I don't want to I don't want to use it oh yeah that, that worked much oh yeah yeah that's much faster that pops right out right at least it did there anyway. So we won't bore you with the rest of this. Uh, needless to say, this worked a lot better, and so we used it. Uh, we had to put a couple of coats on and get it a layer at a time in some spots, but it worked pretty well. <laughs> All covered with lint and stuff. This poor gun is. Uh, when I went to the when I went to the gun store to buy this gun. It turned out to be a consignment gun that was dropped off in 2008. And when they called it, when I made the offer on it, and they called the guy to see if he'd accept the offer, uh, he had forgotten the gun was there. So, which is exactly what you're looking for. Those are the kind of guns you want. So, ones that people don't even remember that they had them. Because then they'll pretty much take anything, anything you offer for them. Yeah, if we let that, especially on these these parts that are uh, this paint that is a little that's on really thick, if we let that uh, we let that nail polish remover sit on there just a little bit longer. And it doesn't appear to be having any impact at all on the on the bluing or whatever other coating that is. So that's great. It's a very, if it's blue, it's a very deep bluing. It's it's black, and I don't know if it's actually blued or if it's uh, painted. But you can see now that you know that that really came out very well and it comes off pretty well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with this and try to get the rest of this crap off of this barrel. Since I'm OCD, I'll start at the top. Make sure there's nothing else underneath. Now these, this part, and up to about here, well, used to be about here, were covered up by the by the stock. But where they cut it, it actually looks like uh, you can actually. I think these are wire wheel marks, and I think they were actually stripping the the original finish off of this when they were thinking about uh, uh, turning this into a uh, sporterized gun. So I'm just going to continue painting this with stripper and see how much of this we can get off of here. Sorry. Okay, so this seems to be working pretty well with the nail polish remover. So basically what I'm going to do is just continue 
painting a head with the nail polish remover and getting that on the paint and it soften up and then uh, using the steel wool to actually remove the, the little bits of paint that are on there. Uh, towards the end of this I do have some problems with the site because there's some cuts and stuff on the site that make it very hard to reach with the steel wool so it's very difficult to get that stuff out of there. But in any event, uh, it, the uh, using the nail polish remover seemed to work really well and didn't hurt the original finish of the gun which I believe was a painted finish. But uh, so I may have to decide how I'm going to, when I get through restoring the gun, how am I going to remedy that. Okay, we've gotten all the paint off of the metal parts. Now we're going to try the stock. Um, I'm going to try some of this in the on an inside part here where you can't really see it that well. I'm going to use the same process and see if that, see if that helps at all. Now I expect some of the finish is going to come off because this is wood, not metal. Uh, meh. It's okay and nothing spectacular. It really doesn't like it's, look like it's hurting it very much. And that's, that's pretty much what I was concerned about. Was whether or not the... Uh, stuff I'm using to loosen the so basically what's going on here is it's, it's taking it off pretty much but some of the paint obviously has gotten down into the grain of the wood and that is I don't think that's going to come out to be honest with you I think that's just going to stay right where it is so I can I can dull it you know make it look a little less obvious but I don't think I'm going to be able to totally get rid of it you know if it's on there very lightly then yeah it'll come off but if not it's gonna uh, it's gonna stay on there a little bit the real the real problem is not the main stock the problem is the handguard they really bitched up the handguard very badly so uh, this does work it doesn't look like it's hurting, you know, I can hit this with some linseed oil or something afterwards and uh, straighten it out. They didn't put a hard finish on this on this uh, stock when whoever was playing with it was playing with it. So it does look, it does look like this will work. Just going to take a little bit longer because it's uh, further in there. So I continue using the nail polish and getting as much as I can out of the inside of the main stock here. This is the problem right here. And of course it's all inside, you know, it's all contoured wood here. It's going to be very difficult to get at, to get it right. So I think I'm going to be a little bit more liberal with the remover. The nail polish remover couldn't cut through the heavy paint, so I decided to try some furniture uh, paint stripper I had hanging around the house. The, uh, the stripper that we used worked very well on this. Uh, of course, I am, like I thought I was going to, I am having trouble in the detailed areas here because it's very difficult, even after the stripper has done its job to go in there and try to get that stuff out of there. It's very hard to get that out of there and it has stained, the, the stuff has stained the wood to some extent. But as you can see from what this looked like when we first got started, that's, that stuff has done an amazing job of, uh, of getting this paint off of here. And it really has not damaged the, uh, the, the, re the regular finish of the wood very much at all. So I was, was pretty happy about that. I got a couple of nice light lines here. So, so basically what I did was uh, uh, I forgot to turn the camera on. Of course, I was talking to the camera the whole time and didn't realize that it was not turned on. And uh, I basically applied this a couple of times, let the paint bubble up, and then, uh, you know, rubbed it off. And uh, so what we're waiting now is we're just letting the... Uh, this, this is supposed to be a 15-minute stripper. And uh, I was taking it off in just three or four minutes. So just to try to protect the wood a little bit more. 
but now that we're getting into the deep part of this, it's time for us to really try to get uh, uh, let the stripper get down in there and, and do its job. So we're just going to wait a minute or two, and uh, you know, a couple of minutes, and, and let the stripper do its job. We continued applying the stripper and then eventually went and used the steel wool to help clean out the, the channels that were in there. And it worked pretty well. These uh, these ears here on the back, the, the sight actually has a set that comes out like this. And when the when this uh, top handguard goes on, it actually slides underneath them like this. So these are not going to be terribly visible these little end parts here. But this top stuff, you know, all this all these cutouts here are visible as long as the sight is in its normal position, the ladder sight, the adjustable sight on the back of the gun. So So here's just some more cleaning and sanding and see this using really, the steel wool. We've really got almost all that paint out of here. So on the visible portions of this, you really just don't see it at all. So very, very happy to have tried that. It's worth a shot. Excellent. Okay. So that's it as far as, as uh, the cleanup is concerned. Uh, basically what I'm going to be doing now is try to find replacement parts until I can find uh, a bottom uh, stock it really doesn't make a lot of sense for me to go crazy uh, picking up other pieces of hardware like the end the, uh, the, the uh, front nose cap and all that stuff uh, but When the, I mean, I'll have to give the gun a good cleaning, obviously. Not, I don't mean the paint part, but I mean just a regular cleaning and safety inspection, like we do with most of them, with most of these guys. So once we get that done, then uh, we may be able to take it out to the range and put a couple rounds through it. Let's see what happens. As I said, the the uh, ore is not terribly bad, so uh, excuse me, we should be. Okay there. All right. So that's the that's the top hand guard. I've already seen the other the other pieces. Take a fast look here. Everything all together. But you can see, that, you know, we got all the we got all the paint off of the action of the gun. We also removed all the paint from the trigger guard and magazine portion. Which is gonna fit right back in here. Eventually this guy's gonna drop right in here. And handguard. And you can see here's where I was talking about you see how the the uh, sights have that shelf and this handguard slides under that shelf and that's what keeps the handguard on and you can see from there that you don't really get you don't see very much of that red at all pretty good this site's pretty interesting I, I don't know if I talked to you guys about that at all but uh, the site on this one is pretty cool there's a button on the side here that you push in and that moves a lever and there's a spring with a catch with like a with like a cutout and the whole the whole side of this site is set up to take those cutouts so basically what you do is you push it in and you slide this down to whichever one you want and of course wherever the slide ends up so this is set to six not to five see five it's in the half halfway up five but it's this is the you know you I'm sorry you you so that's eight, not seven. You can see it's even here at eight. Uh, you probably can't see that. I can't really focus on that very well. But uh, there's a ooh, there's another piece of red stuff. Eh. Go get that one. Okay. But anyway, so you you push this in, and the the 
these uh, uh, little cuts on the side here. These little cuts on the side is where this goes. But when but when the sight is fully forward, you'll see there's another there's another dovetail back here. So there's a dovetail in the sight itself, the elevator part, and then there's a sight back here. So when you put this all the way forward, it lays into that cutout of the forearm along with its little adjuster there and now you have the battle sights and I think the battle sights were 200 so I think this goes from 200 meters to 1000 meters I believe is how this is uh, set up to go but that, I just thought that was pretty cool how they use that cutout to uh, to do that so, and that's why you have all that detailing in that woodwork in here is to find a place for this to nest and get down out of the way of these uh, of these battle sites so that's it for uh, for this guy as far as getting the paint off. Uh, I'll be doing a, a, a strip down and, and clean up on it. Uh, and when I get the uh, magazines, I'll put together uh, the strip down cleanup and range guy. And hopefully in the next six months or so, I'll be able to find myself another stock and bring this back to where uh, how it used to look. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it.